everybody, and welcome to the Coach Kurt Signetti Show. Jack Benedict with you as we talk IUP football. And coming off a 31 to nothing win over Clarion last Saturday to put the record now at 6-3 and three on the year. Coach, you guys got off to a terrific start, and anybody that saw the game, listened to it, watched it or whatever, great defensive performance. It all started on the first couple of plays, the deflection, Aquino Robertson, touchdown interception, yeah, yeah. and then you went from there, didn't you? Our defensive line was the story of the day and set the tempo on the very first play when Clarion dropped back to pass and we sacked the quarterback and continually harassed the quarterback all day long. I mean, it was just up front on, on our D-line. It was just uh, really manhandled their offensive mm -hmm. line. And uh, they couldn't run and they couldn't protect. So, and that, that's a good feeling. And the very, on second down in about 20, uh, they, they threw a little drive route across the middle, receiver bobbled the ball, and there was a Keno there, and 7 nothing right off the bat. Yeah, right away. Yeah. You know, it's amazing because, the you know, some people may say, well, a Clarion quarterback wasn't that good, this and that. Well, it just depends how you look at it. You know, the previous week, he had, as we had talked, he had thrown for over 370 yards against a good Cal team. Yeah. Just shows how good your defense was that day. Well, I think the Clarion quarterback actually is pretty good. I watched him throwing warm-ups, and I was really impressed with the way he was spinning the football. And he showed on tape the week before mm -hmm. uh, how good he can be. But it's hard to play quarterback when you don't have time to throw. And, uh, look, the defensive line reminded me of the early pit lines, Boyarski, Neil Meisner, Hugh Green, Ricky Jackson, the way they used to get after people. That's how we got after Clarion mm -hmm. on Saturday. And it just makes everybody else's job easier in the run game and the pass game when you're whipping guys up front. Defensive backs don't have to cover as long. Linebackers are freed up to make plays in the run game. And, uh, you know, that, that was the story of the day. Yeah, so you mentioned those guys from Pitt. Now, mention your guys now up front. And you rotate about eight yeah. guys, which is, has been the case. And that's really good because yeah. other people are getting experience and getting breathers, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Bryce Gilbert, Karan Gibson, uh, inside with Jamel Everett and Justin Weldon spelling. And Jeff Palmer's been playing in there. Too, and Matt Moad's really come on at uh, defensive end, and Shane Meisner has really played well. Mm -hmm. He's upped his game the last three or four weeks. So, you know, those guys, have, have they've done a good job all year. They really have. You know, against Slippery Rock, we didn't have the opportunity to get a lot of them on the field sometimes because we played some three down. Uh, but, you know, they are what I thought they could be. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we finish the year strong you know, and yeah. have another big game this week against Gannon and then Westchester up front because, you know, the defensive line can just completely set the tempo for a game. A lot of these guys are going to be back, too. That's right. Yeah, which is yeah. a good thing. Uh, speaking of being back, it was nice to see Alexander Berdahl back. Yeah. He's been dinged up in his last year, all-conference player. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh, huge difference. I mean, we, we miss him so much, and that's not to slight anybody else that's playing. We've had guys step in and do a good job, but Alex Dahl is a great football player. And, you know, we were expecting big things from him last year and this year. Yeah. He got hurt in the opener last year, missed the whole year, and we're happy to have him back this year. And he, up to this game, he had played about 10% of the snaps with a variety of, you know, leg type injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting him back, and he looked like he didn't miss a beat. Uh, and, you know, he was outstanding. You know, just to follow up on him, uh, we think about certain players maybe that are highly recruited and then others who are walk-on. I remember he was a walk-on. Yeah. So he worked his way in first as special teams, then as a starter, as an all-conference guy. Uh, that's just perseverance, and that, that's just the, you yeah. know, the will to want to play football. No doubt. I mean, you know, recruiting is not a science, and Alex was overlooked and came as a walk-on. And uh, But from the moment he stepped on the field since I got here, you know, you could tell the guy had instinct, was a good player. He's not a walk-on anymore. He, <laughs> he earns his keep. Or he, he gets paid a little bit for his performance. But, uh, yeah, we'll miss Alex. But, you know, but we've really missed the snaps that he's missed this year yeah, quite a bit. exactly. How about the secondary? A lot of young guys back there coming yep, along. Yep, yep. Continue to be very impressed with uh, Stevie Franco and uh, Aquino Robertson. And uh, Alan Wright at field corner has every game just gotten better and better. Of course, Jarrell McFadden's been playing a long time. And I thought Takai Turner took a step this week. You know, he, uh, he hurt his knee against Edinburgh, and he's been in and out. 
and the knee's been bothering him a little bit. But he made a couple really nice plays Saturday, another true freshman, uh, and he's got an outstanding future. Let me follow up on Alan Wright, freshman. Uh, stay with the play, that big 76-yard pass play. I mean, you know, the guy almost outran everybody, but yeah. he came out of nowhere, saved the touchdown, and yeah. then, you know, you held him. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, it was a ball in the air we, that we had our hands on, just didn't make the play. He came from the other side of the field. Allen loves to play football. He's got a high motor, ran him down, almost stripped the ball. And then our defense stopped him, uh, you know, on the three-yard line. The Clarion couldn't get the ball in. Uh, you know, we held him on fourth down. Another time they got down there, we blocked the field goal. So, we, you know, it was a terrific job. Yeah. Let's go on the other side of the ball. Let's talk about the offense. Yeah. So the last two weeks, you were looking at <laughs> passing attempts, yeah. what, 44 and 50. Right. 12 attempts, uh, used both quarterbacks, as mm -hmm. you had planned to do, Chase Haslett and uh, Eddie uh, Stockett. Uh, tell us about them, and right. was that the game plan? I'm sure not to throw as much, but maybe not 12. Well, I wanted to get back to establishing the line of scrimmage and running the football, which you know we won a lot of games doing. And I uh, wanted to do that a little bit more against Kutztown, Kale, and Slippery Rock, but didn't quite have the success, and then got behind and got into a throwing game, which... You know, we've proven that we can throw for yards, but not, you know, the bottom line is, are you winning the game? So I wanted to establish the line of scrimmage. I thought uh, we, the kids did a nice job up front. I thought the backs ran well. Chris Temple came in, ran very well. And, uh, and so we were able to hold the ball and, uh, you know, move the ball. We didn't score as much as, you know, I would have liked. I mean, we'd, we were up 24 nothing rather quickly. Had another nice drive going, but had two holding calls. On that, uh, one on a receiver, which, you know, I don't know if it was a great call, but it was called. And then the next series, driving again and had a fumble. So, I mean, the way our defense played, and particularly our defensive line, uh, you know, that game could and should have been about 50 to nothing. Uh, you know, we missed a couple long passes that we should have hit. We took some shots. We had guys wide open. Sometimes we were late throwing the ball. Sometimes the throw wasn't quite there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we left probably 200 yards passing out there on the field when you come back and look at the tape. I mean, we should have been about 10 for 13 for about 260. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we'll get better. You know, it was just execution. Yeah. It was nice to see that, uh, and I know it was in your game plan to use more running backs. Chris Temple gives you 114 yards, a touchdown. Luigi gets 71 and a touchdown. Izzy comes in there. Late in the game, you put Bubba in. We even forgot about him. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's good depth and a lot of young players here that are going to contribute yeah. now and the future. Yeah, that's right. So we've got a lot of them playing. A lot of them will be back and, uh, you know, trying to get uh, some of the good young ones a little bit more playing time right now. Yeah, but, even uh, on the offensive line. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had to reshuffle our line a little bit because uh, – Dan Charmo was sick, missed the whole week of practice, and Tony Morgante went back in at right guard, and he only lasted about three series. He's had a knee problem the whole year, mm -hmm. uh, and we thought he was over it, but you know, when, when it, once he got in the game, uh, you know, he wasn't over it. So we had to move Ethan Cooper to right guard, who did a really nice job, and Eddie Byer to left guard, who also did a nice job. Our center, uh, Matt Sasson, probably played his best game of the year. Both tackles played well, Bruce Atkins and Jorge. Tight ends did a nice job of blocking. So, uh, you know, it, it was like kind of we had been playing my previous three years. Yeah. It was nice to churn out kind of a dominating win like that. And, but that's what I wanted to get back to, too. Mm -hmm. I, I think even the Clarion people said, you know, it was IUP football style we saw today. Not many people do that anymore. Yeah. Let's talk about Gannon. And Gannon is very good. Now, they yeah. didn't play last week because of the Cal situation, right, yeah. and they get the forfeiture win or whatever. Uh, they get some weapons, don't they? Oh, yeah. Well, they're really good on offense. Uh, their, their tailback leads the conference in rushing 150 yards a game. Quarterback is six foot seven. Uh, this is his third year as a starter. I'm very impressed. I've always been very impressed with him. Uh, he, he makes quick decisions. He's got a quick release, gets the ball there. But he can also hurt you with his legs. I mean, he rushes for about 40 yards a game. They've got a couple receivers. They've got a leading receiver in the conference that's caught 12 balls a game for 104 yards. Mm -hmm. So they're fully dimensional, and uh, it'll be a big challenge. They've got a big offensive line, run a lot of inside zone. 
and some power, and uh, you know it'll be a big challenge for our defense. I got to ask you, what's it like playing at that intimate setting at Gannon? Everything is so close because yeah. it's an all-purpose. I mean, they played baseball on that field uh, later on in the spring, you know, probably in the snow. But uh, uh, it has that small college yeah. type atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah, it really is kind of condensed, and I've only been up there one time, and I heard they've made some improvements to the facilities. And it, last time we were up there, it was a heck of a game. Uh, it was our 10th game of the year, and uh, we pulled it out at the end, 34-31. to 31. And Gannon really played well that day. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it is a little bit of a different environment, yeah. no, no doubt about it. But Gannon, you know, Gannon has uh, got a lot to play for. They're thick in the conference race right now. And... Uh, you know, they've done a good job there and uh, really haven't been in this position before. We've had good success against Gannon since I've been here. They beat us two years in a row before I came, and, uh, you know, we're 3-0 and against them. Mm -hmm. But that, that doesn't mean anything. But, you know, we still haven't lost in November, and, you know, we talked to the kids about that, mm -hmm. and we haven't lost to Gannon. We talked to them about that, too. So I, I thought our team played with great effort uh, Saturday in a bounce-back game against Clarion. And, uh, you know, we flew around good, and I really want to finish this season strong. You know, mathematically, we really aren't eliminated from the playoff race. You know, we'd have to win out, and I don't know what else would have to happen. I mean, it's probably very slim. Mm -hmm. But uh, it does, you know, give you a little bit more, you know, f fuel for your fire. So I'm sure we'll have a good week of practice, and we'll go up there and play really hard. Yeah. How about an update on injuries? Although uh, when we do this, it's always early in the week. I know yeah. Saloth was, uh, you know, got dinged up a little yeah. bit, but he came out pretty well, don't you think? Yeah, we came out in pretty good shape. Saloth got hit in the head, and we held him for precautionary reasons. He wanted to go back in the game. And, uh, of course, Tony, the right guard, you know, didn't make it through. But, you know, uh, we'll be okay because Charmo will be back, and I thought Eddie Byer played pretty well, really did, and Ethan Cooper at right guard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Dorian Lane, I don't know if he'll make it back this week or not. It's probably still day-to-day. -day. Jay Watkins is out. Mm -hmm. You know, McVay is out. Uh, but, you know, I think that's about everybody. Yeah. Um, how about uh, the fullback you used, uh, Rex Pierce, you used yeah. Kevin Edwards sometime in there. I know Dobowski's been right. dealing with a yeah, shoulder problem. Yeah, he's day-to-day. He's day-to-day, okay. All right, well, good. Hey, good luck on the road. Uh, last road game of the regular season. I'll still emphasize that. <laughs> two to go, and let's see if you can wrap it up. Yeah, two style. big ones, starting yeah. with Gannon on the road. Yeah, good luck to you. Thanks. All right, that's Coach Kurt Signetti. The game is at noon. It's an early game at Erie. Noontime kickoff, and we'll have all the coverage for you, too. We'll be back here to talk about it next week. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.